want to thank everybody for your patience. Thank you for coming out on this, what turned out to be a, a beautiful sunny afternoon. We've got several folks I want to thank, and, and I, I apologize in advance. I know there are more folks uh, than, uh, than are on this list. So I'm going to start, and then you're going to hear from some other, uh, other speakers, and I'm going to ask them to recognize some of the folks that I may have missed. You're going to hear from uh, Louisiana Gen Rep, the NRG Rep, Jennifer Vosberg. You're going to hear from our delegation. Uh, Representative Major Tebow and Senator Rick Ward. And I want to thank each of these entities. You're going to hear about Energy's uh, donation uh, to the effort, but I also want to thank your legislative delegation. They've worked hard on False River. They've worked hard over a number of years to provide the funding and, and to uh, make sure the studies get done and now actually construction gets done. They've gone to Baton Rouge and done a good job working with their colleagues. Let's give Major and Rick a great round of applause for their hard work. <laughs> Major's the one with a beard. At least he calls that a beard. I don't know if that's a, what, what that is. We've got several elected officials, and I want to thank them. This has been a great state local effort. We've got our sheriff, and I want to thank Bud. I know that he and his deputies were working 24 hours around the clock during this ICE event. You know, we tell everybody to stay off the streets, but really the sheriff's deputies, the state troopers, DOTD, they don't have any choice. They've got to go out there and work. He and his folks did a, a great job. We've got our, our clerk of court. We've got Linnell Swindler Landry. We've got our assessor, Jimmy Lawrence. We got our mayor here in New Roads, Robert Meyer. We got several police jurors, uh, Sassy uh, Porsche. We got Cornell Dukes. We've got Janik Vosberg. Uh, we've got Kyle Oland. We got Justin Cox. We've got the secretaries of DNR and Wildlife and Fisheries, Steve Schutz from DNR, Robert Barham, Wildlife and Fisheries. We've got John Spain from the Baton Rouge Area Foundation. And like I said, I know we've got several other uh, elected folks and other officials, so I'm going to ask uh, Jennifer and Major and Rick when they get up here to, to thank all those folks. Let's give all these men and women a great round of applause for the great job they've done on Falls River. You know, I know it's a little cool out here, but it is certainly great to be here on the banks of Falls River. I know growing up, certainly I'll speak for myself, we would make the short trip often from Baton Rouge for the great fishing, the great water skiing. And the reality is, my kids still do that. My, my little boy, I've got a, a nine-year-old son in particular who comes out here. I think he spends much of his summer with his buddies down here. By the way, growing up down here, now that I see the shoreline property and I see how much it costs, I kind of wish maybe that we had bought some property way back then. You know, if we could have invested it. And I love how people call these camps. You look at some of these camps, they're nicer than my house. But if we bought an old camp back then, it may have been worth more than the governor's mansion today. It might have been the best investment we'd ever made. You look at the, the records that have been set out of this lake over the years. You look at the record bass, the catfish, the other fish that have been pulled out of this lake over many, many years. But if you listen to the folks that live here, they'll tell you that the fishing here for decades hasn't been the same. Things have been changing. They'll tell you they're not catching as many fish. The fish that they do catch are smaller. The water quality in the lake has decreased. There's too much siltation going on right here. The reality is I want my kids, I want their kids to have the same opportunities to enjoy Falls River that we grew up, that we enjoyed as kids growing up here in the Capital Area region. This needs to continue to be a, a fun place to visit, a great place to live, a place where you can catch record fish, where you can water ski, where you can come enjoy all of the great restaurants, antique shops, and the other sites. You know, decades ago, there were a number of well-intentioned projects that resulted in draining hundreds of thousands of tons of sediment, fertilizers, and other runoff into Falls River. Some of those projects may have achieved some short-term, some parochial objectives, but they had a long-term negative impact on this lake. We have waited for years for the Corps of Engineers and other agencies to study the problem, but we simply never saw action. And finally, we said, look, times, it, it's finally time to stop all these studies. It's time to take action. We don't have time to wait anymore. False River is too important to this area. It's too important to our state to simply let it go to waste. And that's why we're stepping up to restore fisheries and water quality in False River. We're here today to announce not only a couple of different and important partnerships, we're here to announce the beginning of a $2.7 million project funded through capital outlay to restore the fisheries and water quality in False River. The, absolutely, let's, let's give a round of applause to those that made this possible. The immediate priority of the Watershed Council is to construct an island terrace for the South Flat. These funds, the $2.7 million, will be used to design and construct an estimated 16-acre island using over 100,000 cubic yards of dredge sediment. Now, the construction of this island will help to solidify the dredge sediment and prevent resuspension of this silt that is causing turbidity problems in False River. In other words, let's take that dirt, let's take that silt out of the river so it's not causing problems, and let's build an island out of it. 
The project is also expected to create over 3,500 feet of shoreline habitat, increasing water oxygen levels and improving water clarity. Now, what does all of that mean? That means the clearer the water, the more sunlight penetration will happen. That's important to help reestablish aquatic vegetation and water oxygen levels. We're going to start construction in the fall. The good news is the money's in the capital outlay budget, so we can start construction in the fall. It's already been approved. The Bond Commission's already given their approval. Funding is going to help address also a future project to be developed by the Watershed Council to address siltation issues on the North Flats on False River. The state has already begun to work with local officials to restore fisheries and water quality in False River in a number of different ways. For example, the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries has stocked the lake with bass, and in 2012, they released 300,000 red ear or chinkapin. Recently, the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, the police jury, the local Kiwanis Club, and private donors helped to construct gravel spawning beds to help the fish populations in False River. For the first time in 20 years, the Wildlife and Fisheries Commission opened False River to commercial fishing season to help reduce the population of the garfish and other rough fish, such as buffalo and carp. Tens of thousands of pounds of fish have already been caught. Removing this fish will help the sport fish, the ones we like to eat, to actually thrive. We've got a couple of partners. I want to thank them. In addition to the Qantas Club, our local police jury, and other private donors, I want to thank the Baton Rouge Area Foundation. They've established the False River Restoration Fund as a repository for monetary donations from individuals, groups, industry foundations, and businesses to help restore and enhance False River and its surrounding watershed and habitat. The $2.7 million announcement is an important one, but I'm here to say, to announce and emphasize the state's commitment. This is an important project, but we are committed to doing whatever it takes to make sure we restore False River, and we're going to need the help. We're going to need the help of other agencies like Wildlife and Fisheries and DNR. We're going to need the help of local government, and we're going to need the help of, of private individuals as well. So I thank the Baton Rouge Area Foundation for stepping up, for being such a valuable partner. Let's give them a great round of applause for helping in this effort. We also have one more funding announcement to make. NRG Energy, which is a very important part of our community, is investing a million dollars towards the False River Watershed Program. And like I said, that's above and beyond the $2.7 million provided by the state. So today is a great day and it is a great project, but it is only one more step. We are committed to taking all the steps necessary. These investments will help return False River to its glory days. They'll help fill the restaurants, the shops, the hotel rooms with fishermen, boaters, and tourists. It's good for our economy. It's good for our visitors. Most importantly, it's good for our residents who live here year-round and deserve the same quality recreational and economic opportunities we all grew up enjoying as kids in this beautiful, beautiful part of Sportsman's Paradise. What a great win for the lake, for New Roads, and for the entire state of Louisiana. Now, I want you to give your uh, attention. We've got three folks I want to come, and then we'll ask if any of these other folks want to come and speak as well. But I especially want to hear from Jennifer. Thanks again to their generous donation, the million dollars from Energy. And then you're going to hear from Major Tebow and Rick Ward, who have absolutely made this a priority in, in Baton Rouge. And again, I can't stress enough how much we appreciate your representative and senator for the great work they do convincing and working with the administration, convincing their colleagues why it's so important the entire state invest in False River. So please give Jennifer a warm round of applause as she comes up. Thank you, Governor. On behalf of NRG Energy and our operations here in Louisiana that are headquartered in New Roads and Point Capi Parish, Louisiana Generating, we are very happy to be a part of this uh, event today and announce our $1 million donation to the False River Restoration Project. We have facilities and generate power from coast to coast. And at every site, whether it's a fossil fuel site or in one of our renewable sites, it's very important for us to be good environmental stewards in the communities that we live in. Our employees are members of this community. And like the governor, so many of us have fond memories of False River. We're very happy to partner with the state and local governments and different bodies and entities that are supporting False River and look forward to working with them and support the future restoration and preservation of False River. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to reiterate to, to thank NRG, thank our other private partners, people like Delta Land Services who just put in a mitigation bank. This is a perfect example of how um, our, our local government and our state government can come together to achieve uh, the, the goals. We, you know, we don't, we can look around right now and, and, and we have the talent within the state and local government to solve problems and, and this is just a great example of coming together to solve 
uh, the issues that Falls River has uh, through these partnerships. And, and I hope it continues. Go Governor General continues to ask me where my razor is. <laughs> and I, I'm going to find it as soon as we finish this Falls River project. <laughs> so I may be looking like Willie Robinson before it's <laughs> over with, but um, I'm hoping I'll be able to cut it soon. But uh, anyway, thanks everyone for attending and, and thank you for helping us uh, to, to restore this lake that is not just important to Point Capi in this region, but is very important to Louisiana. Well, um, you know, the, this is a tremendous day for Falls River and, and really for Point Capi because uh, one of the things that separates this parish from so many others is is what we what we stand in front of today. You know, there are a lot of rural parishes, and they would love to have a place like this. So for us to to really uh, get behind a a project like this and make sure that uh, we take care of and we're good stewards of of what the Lord blessed us with. You know, the governor has been a, a tremendous help in getting us uh, or helping to facilitate getting the funding we need to do this. NRG, the, the $1 million um, amount that they're giving is just tremendous. Major has, has done an amazing job of spearheading this whole thing, and uh, it's been a pleasure to work with everyone on both the local and state level. So we have a lot, a lot left to do, and I know uh, me and Major are on the same page. We're not going to stop until, until we get things back, back to where they were years ago. So thank you. We'll be happy to take media questions. Governor, how long is the project going to take? They'll start construction this fall. Um, Robert, do you know how long? Or Steve? Uh, Our detail is uh, well over a year following the initial beginning. So it'll start this fall. He, he's saying it'll take a, uh, over a year. Next, next year we'll start on 